648, a live look at New Orleans, Louisiana. It is coming up on the 10th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. The mayor plans to outline the city's resilience report today, highlighting some of the many remarkable recovery and survival stories across the region. Katrina was the deadliest hurricane to hit the United States since 1928. A very good Tuesday morning, everyone, and thank you so much for waking up with the Valley today. Kyle Bosch, Lisa has the day off. We're just getting started with nonstop news and weather all the way up to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. And we're following some breaking news this morning. Clay County Jail Authorities have confirmed to Valley News Live that they are investigating a hanging incident at the county jail. It was discovered just before 2 a.m. this morning. Officials not commenting yet if the person was an inmate or if they died. The sheriff's office did tell us they plan to release more information later today. Also breaking for you this morning, the Minnesota State Patrol is identifying three people involved in a two-vehicle crash on Highway 10 near Holly last night. Police say 23-year-old Dylan DeLay of West Fargo rear-ended a pickup driven by 68-year-old Carol Riggle of Frazee, Minnesota. Riggle lost control of her truck, overcorrected, and rolled into a cable barrier. A passenger in that vehicle 71-year-old Betty Woodward of Palmdale, California, was hurt. However, troopers say her injuries are not life-threatening. Authorities say the driver of a car with stolen license plates led them on a chase through Moorhead early today with speeds reaching nearly 100 miles per hour. It all started in the MSU Moorhead neighborhood around 3.30 a.m. Moorhead police terminated their chase once it turned on a university drive in Fargo. Police in Fargo then lost track of that stolen vehicle. Well, one of the first names to emerge as a possible candidate for North Dakota governor is Fargo businessman and developer Doug Burgum. The founder of Great Plains Software told KFGO News that Governor Jack Dalrymple deciding not to run again changes the dynamics of the race and that he would be open to the possibility of running. Dalrymple announced yesterday morning he doesn't plan to seek re-election next year. He says that he and his wife are looking forward to spending more time with family. Just hit 651. Time for weather and traffic on the ones, and we start with meteorologist Mick Care. Thank you, Kyle, and we start with a lovely day, turning into a lovely afternoon. Sun just now about uh, 10 minutes above the eastern horizon. By 3 to 4 o'clock this afternoon, 73 Fargo, 76 Jamestown. This little thin line of clouds here is a warm front. The leading edge of a warmer air mass pushing in on the backside of a high that will be right overhead today. And that means hardly any wind. We're kind of in the eye of beautiful weather. So not much. You know, the wind we had yesterday was on the tail end of a low back in Ontario and the front end of the high. So uh, the wind is gone. Sun will be out. Warmer air pushing in for tomorrow. And not a chance of any rain anywhere in the valley today. And much warmer for today up in northern Minnesota than yesterday's upper 50s to about 60. And tomorrow should be even warmer. Uh, low mid 70s up in northwest Minnesota. Today we're going for the low 70s to mid 70s in southeastern North Dakota. Yes, warmer than yesterday and a lot less wind, mostly under 10, a lot of times under 5 miles an hour. So well, earlier we called this a nearly perfect day, and I think we will. At, when, by the time you head into the evening, you can say this was a perfect day, even with some mid to upper 60s. In northern Minnesota, that's far closer to perfection than yesterday's cloudy, breezy, and cool and drippy around the Red Lake, Bemidji area a lot of the afternoon. All right, the not much rain or clouds up there now. The air is calm. The sky is clear in Grand Forks, East Grand Forks. Uh, the wind has uh, disappeared. And our temperatures are a cool 37, though, in Langdon, a cool 41 in Fergus Falls, 44 in Grand Forks, East Grand Forks, and Fargo-Moorhead, 45. Traffic update now. Good morning, Al Ahmed. Good morning to you, Mick. Good morning, everyone. I am northbound on Interstate 29 this morning. Traffic on Interstate 29, both north and southbound, is pretty darn thick. No two ways about that. You really need to watch it through the uh, work zone, which is southbound I-29 for 12th Avenue north to 32nd Avenue uh, south. Uh, travel speeds better reduced to 40 miles an hour, and we lose a lane. But it's lots and lots of traffic out here this morning. Uh, schools back in at NDSU, and I'm sure that contributes to uh, a good part of it. As far as Interstate 94, traffic out there pretty thick as well. Mainly westbound, though. Uh, eastbound isn't quite as heavy. Drive carefully today, and always remember school is starting in West Fargo and some schools in Fargo as well. Look out for those kids.
Alamut Valley today traffic. Turning back to your news headlines this morning, a Minnesota farmer is fuming over what he says police did to his farmstead after serving a search warrant. Dan Hansen of Wadena says all police would tell him is that they were looking for human remains. He says as many as 60 officers were involved in the search and they dug up an area about the size of a tennis court on his property. Hansen suspects that police are looking for the body of Carla Anderson, who was last seen at her Wadena apartment in 1987. Hansen says he has nothing to do with Anderson's disappearance. Well, with thousands of kids heading back to school this week, Fargo police are planning extra patrols. This year's Blue Days will be held today through Friday. Police are conducting traffic enforcement throughout the city, but focusing on areas in and around schools. The goal of the extra enforcement is to remind drivers to follow the traffic laws in school zones and around buses, create a safe environment for kids, and encourage people to wear seatbelts. Well, of course, kids are waking up a little anxious maybe this morning and excited. It is the first day of school for some kids here in the Valley. That includes Fargo Catholic Schools and West Fargo. Well, helping students and parents get ready for the big day, the Valley Today's Christy Larson, who is live at South Elementary in West Fargo this morning. Christy? Good morning, Kyle. That's right. You know, we are so excited for school to start. I already got my stuff in my desk ready to go. My locker is full. But we did want to talk a little bit about what they're going to be learning in the classroom. So we have Lori Salander here with us this morning. And you're the fifth, one of the fifth grade teachers yeah. here. And talk about what you're going to be incorporating in your classroom this year. Um, the fifth grade team, we're really going to try and incorporate more of the STEM in our classes and the four C's. So that way students can get exposure before they go off into sixth grade. Um, I have a huge passion for STEM. So anytime I see anything, I'm like, ooh, how can I make it a STEM subject? So... Um, the first thing they have to do today is learn collaboration. So, And let's talk about what those four C's are. And you do have them up around your classroom, too. Yes, each wall represents one of the four C's, critical thinking, communication, creativity, and collaboration. And how important is it for you to be teaching kids this at such a young age? Um, I think the exposure helps them understand that they can fail, but yet still be successful. They can learn how to communicate. They can talk to each other. Collaboration, working together, they don't always have to be in charge or let someone else be in charge. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different important lessons. And like you said, today is about having fun and about learning what you're going to be expecting of them this year. Yes, I cannot wait for them to come in. Um, their first activity they have to do is a big collaboration. And they have to work as a team to build a pyramid of glasses. So it's going to be fun to see how they can put the four C's together in the first STEM project. <laughs> and again, we talked also about how Fargo, you said, is starting their blue days. West Fargo is going to be doing that as well. And also the West Fargo School District is also trying to help make your kids be more safe around the school buses. They're going to be adding cameras on their school buses to make sure cars are not going past them when those stop arms are out. So, so many good things happening here, and we hope everyone out there has a great first day at school. Busy, exciting, but yeah, obviously a good reminder for everyone, whether you have kids or not. Lots of kids going to be out on the streets today, so keep an eye out for them for sure. Christy Larson reporting live for us. Well, the Fargo School District is headed back to class on Thursday, and when kids get back in the classroom, they'll be dealing with a new locker search policy. The update was part of a series of policy reviews made by the administration over the summer, and while the policy states that, quote, lockers may be suspect to suspicionless searches, Superintendent Jeff Schatz says the district is not planning on doing random searches. Now, Schott says the policy is already in place, but the Fargo School Board will have a chance to talk about it at their meeting tonight. A nurse at a Fargo jail who admitted to having sex with an inmate has been sentenced to 200 hours of community service, the most ever imposed by Cass County Judge Stephen McCullough. KFGO News reports 47-year-old Claire Schwer of Dilworth pleaded guilty to sexual assault and smuggling a cell phone into an inmate. Schwer no longer works for Fargo Cass Public Health or the jail. Well, police are investigating a crash near the Twin Cities that involved nine teenagers, most of whom were thrown from a pickup. It happened late Sunday night in Wright County. Police say that two teens were in the cab of the truck, seven were in the bed of the pickup when it flipped over and landed in a farm field. All of the boys were taken to hospitals, but all are expected to be okay. The uncle of the 16-year-old driver says his nephew should be released from the hospital a little bit later today. It's one of the biggest ones yet, and maybe you've been watching it be, be being built on 52nd Avenue South in Fargo, and today's your chance to get a look inside, or you can 
a little sneak peek right now. The brand new Happy Harry's Bottle Shop officially opens today, but the Valley today got a sneak peek inside the new facility. It has more than 11 miles of wood, an electric car charger, and a cigar room. That silver grain bin on the outside going to be used as a wine tasting room and a classroom, and the shelves are all lit with LED bulbs. The grand opening is set for Thursday. That'll include hot dogs and beer and wine tasting. It goes from 4 until 7. All right, let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. According to a new survey, 1 out of 10 people will do this on their lunch break. And the answer, head to the gym. Get the workout in in the middle of the day. To take part in our question of the morning, just head to our Valley News Live Facebook page and join the conversation. 9 out of 10 people will not. Will not, but maybe you'll go for a walk. A good day to do that on oh, your man. lunch break today. Live, well, would you, what a beautiful day to walk out the front door and enjoy, yes, a little crisply cool, 41. The air is calm, hardly a breeze. Through the day, hardly a breeze. Beautiful day with temperatures into the low to mid 70s today, Kyle. All right, Nick, thank you very much. That's our time on the Valley today. Do have more local news and weather, of course, coming up in just about 25 minutes and right up until 9 a.m. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.